Uh, Daniele Giolimetto. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, I'm Daniel Girimetto, and today I will speak about forecast reconciliation for hierarchical organized data. Um, that uh, is uh, an integral part of my PhD project with uh, Professor Tommaso Di Fonso. The, ses the session will be split into two distinct parts. In the first part, we will briefly look at the methodology of reconciliation in cross-temporal, temporal, and cross-sectional and cross-temporal context, as well as its recent implementation in programming language such as R. In the second part, we will see how to reconcile the forecast for solar power data using R. Okay, problem. Okay. So, forecast reconciliation and hierarchical forecasting have been the focus of considerable discussion in the field of forecasting methodology and practice. A review of Google Scholar reveals that the number of publications in these topics has been on the rise since 2005 indicating a growing interest in this area of research. However, it was not until 2011 that the field of forecast reconciliation gained significant traction with the introduction of the optim optimal combination forecast reconciliation concept by Professor Rob Heinemann and his, his colleagues in the journal, uh, International Journal of Forecasting. So, uh, in simple words, forecast reconciliation is a post forecasting process aimed to improve the quality of the base forecast regardless how they were obtained, of a linearly constrained multiple time series by exploiting cross-sectional and or temporal constraints of the target forecast. When the linearly constrained multiple time series is a hierarchy, this process is known as hierarchical forecasting. There are three different frameworks in which this method can be applied, cross-sectional, temporal, and cross-temporal. We will see these uh, um, in more details later. When implementing forecast reconciliation, it is essential to select approaches that are statistically well-ground, feasible to implement practically, and effective in delivering high-quality results in real-world application. These techniques have been applied successfully in various fields, including economics, finance, marketing, and supply chain management, among others. So, a linear time architecture a hierarchical time series is a collection of n time series that are in, arranged in a hierarchical structure, such as energy consumption across different geographical regions. We speak about grouping time series when we have multiple hierarchical structures that share the top and bottom level time series, such as tourism flow grouped by both by region and purpose of travel. In this structure, only aggregation relationships are present, but they are a special case of a multiple time series with exact linear constraints and not only aggregation. Here, there is uh, the three type of linearly constrained time series. So on the top left, we have a simple hierarchy where uh, we have uh, five bottom time series, three upper time series, two level intermediate and one on the top. The constraints are very simple. Looking at the bottom, we have two, year, two hierarchy that share both the top in white and the bottom in red, but they have different intermediate uh, series. This is uh, an example of a grouped time series. On, on the top right, uh, we have two hierarchy that share only the top level series uh, in gray. This is neither a unique hierarchy, neither a group, but this is a generic linear constraints time series. So um, looking to a first look of rock forecast reconciliation, on the left, we have the simple hierarchy that we have seen before. And uh, um, the bottom time series can be seen as the blocks of, of uh, all the structure. Li 
such that the bottom links the upper through the summing matrix S. Uh, that uh, is known as structural representation of uh, um, hierarchical group time series. On the right, we have uh, the different linear constraint time series formed by uh, two different hierarchies, which do share the top level series, but do not share the bottom level. In this case, we need uh, uh, the U transpose matrix, that is the constraints matrix, and this is known as zero constraint representation. So uh, these are two equivalent uh, representation of uh, the same structure. We can have uh, the, for both structures the same equivalent representation. Speaking about point forecast reconciliation, we want to obtain forecasts that for targets that fulfill, fulfill the linear constraints. To do this, uh, we forecast all the series at, at all levels of aggregation, which model that partially or completely do not account for constraints. These base forecasts obviously do not necessarily respect the constraints. And so we apply the optimization method to be able to obtain coherent forecast, also called reconciled forecast. So we have seen before the two different representations. So now we can start from one or the other to obtain the two equivalent point formulas. Then on the left, uh, we have uh, the structural approach through a linear regression model with the structural matrix S. On the right, we have the equivalent projection reconciliation formula using the zero constraint matrix. Conceptually, the form of the covariance matrix W that you can see in the formula is, uh, um, con is complex and may be unknown. In practice, we use some approximation uh, using in sample residual, for examples. We will see some one of them later. A temporal constraint naturally valid for a high frequency time series can be exploited to improve the base forecast of a single variable through the so-called temporal hierarchies. A temporal hierarchy is built through non-overlapping aggregation of the observation of a time series at regular intervals. In this example, we have a quarterly time series, the circle, non-overlapping aggregated to semi-annual, the triangle, and annual, the square. K in this case denotes the aggregation order, and M is the uh, most uh, is the frequency of the most disaggregated temporal level. Here we have uh, an alternative representation of the quarterly temporal uh, hierarchy. Unlike cross-sectional hierarchies, we, where n variables at the same time index are considered, in the temporal settings, one deals with uh, one variable observed at different frequencies. Moreover, in these frameworks, if you want to forecast one step ahead for the annual series, you have to forecast at four step ahead for quarterly series. As we've seen before, the cross-sectional frameworks, a structural representation and a zero cost representation still valid and may be alternative used for reconciliation. Yeah, finally, it seems rather natural to put both cross-sectional and temporal framework together. So we have that for each cross-sectional series, we can build a temporal hierarchy, or we can also say that for each node in the temporal hierarchy, we have a cross-sectional hierarchy. In the example, we have a simple two-level hierarchy where X is equal to W plus Z, where for each series, we have a quarterly temporal hierarchy. On the left, we have, the we have representing it starting from the cross-sectional structure, on the right, from, uh, starting from the temporal structure. We develop the complete cross-temporal framework from the cross-sectional cross and the temporal structure. As a result, any cross-temporal matrix may be constructed using the one-dimensional equivalent. So the cross-temporal zero-constraint matrix is large and sparse and easy to compute as a function of the cross-sectional aggregation matrix. 
that is the upper block of the summing matrix S that we have seen before for the structural representation. And uh, this is a function also of the most disaggregate temporal level M. In this framework, it's, import it's important to work with a matrix formulation where the row indicates the cross-sectional dimension and the column the temporal one. Through the projection approach, um, it is uh, e through the uh, projection approach, uh, it is then easy to obtain a simultaneous reconciled forecast for any level of the temporal and cross-sectional aggregation. Omega, in this case, is the cross-temporal covariance matrix, and it should account for two dimensions, spatio-temporal variation. It is large and hard to estimate and approximate, so at the moment, very simple patterns have been considered. Possibly block diagonal, assuming either temporal or cross-sectional in correlation. Again, a cross-sectional, a cross-temporal structural form can be derived using the cross-temporal S summing matrix, that is uh, um, the Kronecker product of the one-dimensional uh, matrix. To reduce the size of the problem, and before uh, this uh, optimal solution that we have seen before, Kurenza Thanosopoulos uh, exploited the cross-temporal reconciliation, splitting the reconciliation in two steps. First, the base forecasts for each single variable are temporal reconciled. Second, a time-by-time -time cross sectional forecast reconciliation of the previously computed forecast is applied. So the final reconciled forecasts are calculated starting from the step one forecast through the average of the step two projection matrix. They start in the first step from a temporal reconciliation, but nothing restricts them from starting from a cross-sectional reconciliation. It should be noted that sometimes the average of the projection matrix is, uh, is not needed. Starting from the work, we can construct an iterative cross-temporal point for reconciliation. The idea is to alternate point for reconciliation along one single dimension. Each iteration consists in the first two steps of the heuristic um, procedure without the final average until a converging criterion is met. Empirical results show that uh, a pretty quick converger is achieved, but regardless of the first fulfilled dimension. Do, um, it's important to note that uh, we can use a numerical optimization algorithm at each step of each iteration to calculate non-negative reconciled forecast. So the field of, of reconciliation in R has a rich history with two prominent packages play significant roles in the past. These are HTS and TF. HTS is considered the first package for, for cross-sectional structural uh, reconciliation, and it offered the additional benefit of uh, allowing for non-negative forecast results. In uh, 2020, it was uh, retired in favor of Fable tools. TF, on the other hand, was the first package to enable reconciliation through temporal hierarchy. This package is very limited in the choice of approximation of the covariance matrix. Nowadays, in the reconciliation framework, there is uh, the Fable tools package that want to be new, the new reference for working with time series. The cross-sectional is the only type of reconciliation that is available on the CRAN repository of R, and temporal and cross-temporal are uh, available on GitHub, but in a very early stage. However, in 2020, uh, we publish and develop uh, for Echo. So uh, for Echo is a package that provides user with a huge range of classical and modern for reconciliation procedures. These procedures include both bottom-up and top-down approaches, as well as optimal and heuristic combination methods. 
They can be applied to multiple uh, time series that are linearly constrained in cross-sectional, temporal, and cross-temporal framework. This package is a matrix basis and takes advantage of the, of the very sparse nature of the matrices that are involved in the reconciliation procedures. This matrix structure allows for a common framework to be created for different reconciliation approach. By utilizing this framework, a user can easily implement a variety of reconciliation methods in a consistent and efficient manner. Here, if you want, you can find some documentation and uh, the link for the CRAN version and the GitHub version. So uh, if uh, we can, we can start uh, with the lab session. And uh, if you have a question anyway, you can interrupt me whenever you want. So can you see my R studio? Yes, okay. So uh, all the material that uh, uh, I will show you, um, I will uh, um, load on GitHub on my website, uh, on my GitHub. So you can find all these after the meeting uh, on GitHub. So uh, in this lab, we use the solar power data for integration study dataset. And this is a data set of 324 hourly time series of voltaic power generation. And our primary objective is to reconcile the base forecasts that are currently neither cross-sectionally nor temporally coherent. The lab is organized in two main parts. The core lab, uh, will, uh, we will, in the core lab, we will see the data organization, the foreco function, and some visualization evaluation of the results. On the second part, we will see some, if we have time, some practical challenges, uh, such as the non-negative issues, or how to put a priori constraints, or if you want to use a subset of the temporal aggregation orders. To achieve this, we will be using a number of libraries, including Plotly, Grid Extra, Scales, and Tidyverse, specifically ggplot for the plot <laughs> and uh, for the tables. For reconciliation, we will use uh, uh, for echo. Um, here you can find uh, some function that we will use, uh, but uh, um, yeah, they, uh, we will not uh, go in details about them. Um, the speed data set uh, is uh, quite famous in literature, and it refers to 318 simulated uh, photovoltaic plants in California for the 206, whose uh, hourly radiation data are organized in three levels. So the first level, denoted as L0, um, comprised one time series for the independent system operator. This time series is given by the sum of the 318 uh, plant series. The second level is a five time series uh, level with transmission zone. It's given by the sum of a group of the bottom level. So here, for example, you, uh, you have the time, the, the transmission zone division. Here on the right, you have different color for different uh, uh, zone. The last level is the uh, plant uh, level. So the hourly time series can be non-overlapping aggregated at two, three, and so on uh, uh, intervals until uh, a, a day cycle. So here we have a grouped temporal hierarchy. For example, the first temporal hierarchy is the day, the eight, four, two hours aggregation and the hourly level. And uh, the second hierarchy is obviously the day and the hourly level, plus uh, the 12, six and three hour aggregation. So um, the Forecast are generating for the two days with a 40 um, 
day training period. Therefore, for the hourly series, uh, we have 48 forecasts, one to 48 step ahead, and so on um, to the daily series, which uh, with two daily forecasts, respectively one and two step ahead. So uh, here in, um, oh, okay. Let's see some common before. So for the cross-sectional part, uh, it's easy to, cre uh, to create the cross-sectional aggregation matrix that uh, we will use later. So here uh, we are uh, define the uh, level division of the bottom series for the uh, L1 division. So here I'm constrict I'm uh, constructing the cross-sectional uh, uh, summing, um, summing matrix, aggregation matrix, sorry. And using this function in Foreco, we are able to obtain a lot of uh, useful tools for reconciliation. So for example, here we are obtaining the aggregation matrix that we have calculated before, but we can also um, calculate the, num the total number of uh, um, series involved in the hierarchy or also we can construct uh, we can construct the um, zero constraint matrix um, on the other hand when we have the temporal framework we can use the uh, function uh, thf tools and as input we have only the highest available sampling frequency for the seasonal cycle and the forecast horizon. And also here we can see these are all the factors of the daily level. So when you have the um, frequency of uh, um, the hourly put equal to 24, here uh, we have all the factor of the daily, uh, day, daily one. But we can have also the temporal structure matrix that is uh, this one. Um, so now, suppose we wish to forecast the photovoltaic power generation at the end of May 16 for uh, the upcom upcoming two days, utili utilizing the previous two weeks as training data. Here you can see, for example, for the 70 plants, the um, time series at the hourly level in the top row, uh, four hour aggregated in the second, eight hour aggregated in the third, and uh, to the daily level in the last one. But we can see also uh, the total, that is the most aggregated level, uh, cross-sectional level, and uh, we can see uh, the hourly and so on, and the daily, that is uh, the cross-temporal most uh, upper level in this case. So our objective is to reconcile forecasts, which is a post forecasting process, as we have seen before. So in this example, we will use the following base forecast. So number weather prediction forecast for the 318 hourly time series at plant level and the automatic ETS forecast using the R patch forecast for all the remaining time series. So the six hourly time series and the 324 time series at greater temporal aggregation order. So here we are loading the forecast, the residual, and the actual observation for the two forecast day. Um, in this example, uh, um, these objects are listed. Uh, in particular, they are listed with uh, uh, of metrics with different dimension because I will see uh, as we have said before. Uh, we have a different forecast horizon for different uh, um, temporal level. So for example, for the daily, we have a matrix with two rows that are the two step ahead uh, forecast horizon and uh, 324 that are the uh, cross-sectional dimension. And, uh, and uh, we can see that for the hourly level, we have 48 times 324. Obviously, this is valid also for the residuals. So uh, for the residual matrix of 
uh, daily residuals. We have uh, uh, 14 row and uh, uh, 336 for the hour level. So let's start by looking at the hourly forecast and the corresponding residual for the cross-sectional forecast reconciliation. So um, as we've seen before, this is the composition of the matrix um, and our objective is to generate a reconciled forecast using the shrinkage approach, which involves the string shrinkage of the sample covalence matrix. Uh, you can find more detail in the documentation of Foreco. So how to do that in R? It's easy to use uh, the uh, HTS rec function of Foreco. In particular, um, you can see the base forecast uh, as input, the aggregation matrix, uh, the commands matrix approximation, and the residuals. It's important to note that not always is important to use the residuals, but uh, for this uh, approximation, we need the residuals. The residuals. Here we are using the aggregation matrix, but uh, it's not mandatory. We can use uh, also the zero constraint matrix and we will be uh, and we will uh, have the same results. Another aspect that we have seen before is the reconciliation formula. I told you before that there is the two equivalent representation, the structural and the projection one. So uh, to do to uh, the default uh, of Foreco is to use the projection approach, but uh, we can also use the structural approach using uh, this uh, parameter. So if we launch uh, this function, as you can say that uh, the output of, uh, of Foreco is uh, a matrix with the same dimension that we have seen before. But this time we have a reconciled forecast. This means that the zero constraints matrix, the zero constraints are uh, respect uh, are, are fulfilled by uh, the, the forecast. We can look at the plot. So we start from the observation that we don't have and we want to forecast. We, uh, we then uh, obtain the base forecast, that are the red one, and uh, we apply the foreco procedure with the black one. Uh, you can see the difference and, and how we adjust the, this forecast only for the uh, 17, uh, for the plant number 17. Looking at uh, some accuracy index in this case, uh, so only related to this uh, um, time series at the hourly level, we can see that uh, uh, we are not improving our root mean square error in this case. But as you can see, this is a multiple time series. So uh, when we consider accuracy index, we have to uh, consider all the structure. Uh, to simplify the process, we will not see that in this lab but we will consider only these series. So now we can start with the temporal forecast reconciliation. When in this case, uh, we are working only with a single series. So for example, assume that you want the temporal reconciliation of the plant number 17. And uh, in this case, we don't, have uh, matrices as input to the function, but uh, vectors whose components are ordered according, according to the increasing temporal frequency. What does it mean? This means that the first two elements of the vector refers to the two daily forecast, respectively one and two day ahead, and so on up to the 48 values that refer to the hourly forecast. So, here, uh, I am extracting the base forecast from uh, the matrix. And uh, uh, you can see that uh, my, uh, my uh, new back base forecast vector is a uh, uh, length 120. And uh, the first two values here uh, is related to the uh, one and two day ahead, and uh, so on. The same thing we have to do for the residuals. 
As we have seen before, as I told you before, the use of Redditor is not always strictly necessary, but depends on the approximation of the covariance method that we want to use. For example, uh, here uh, we are using the structural uh, approximation that uh, doesn't don't need uh, the residuals. Uh, so in R uh, to do the forecast uh, the temporary reconciliation uh, using uh, for echo, we can use the THF reconciliation function, and uh, um, with uh, a similar uh, parameterization that we have seen before, but in this case we are using the no more the aggregation matrix but the maximum order of temporal aggregation as input so also in this case we start from some no coherent forecast and we achieve uh, the uh, co coherency and we can see that uh, um, Starting from the observation, we apply the base forecast and we obtain the reconciliation one. Note that uh, um, if, yes, the root mean square error in this case uh, say that we are improving our, uh, our uh, forecast. But yeah. Now, we can start uh, with the cross-temporal forecast uh, reconciliation uh, uh, idea. Let's keep it simple and start with the partially bottom-up. Sometimes uh, uh, one-dimensional approach can be proved uh, very useful, especially in the high-dimensional problem where other approach could be uh, resource-intensive in terms of time and computational power. So in this case, Partially bottom-up approach consists in the reconciliation in reconciling the high frequency bottom time series and then apply a bottom-up. For example, we previously uh, reconciled the hourly time series in the cross-sectional uh, framework, as you can see here. So now it's uh, the, the idea is starting from this, we want to, to obtain the cross-temporal um, the cross-temporal um, reconciled forecast. To, to do that, we can apply the bottom-up, the temporal bottom-up. Here in ARA, you have two alternatives. So after calculating the, the cross-sectionally, cross we can apply the, to each time series the temporal one. But uh, this is very, this, this could be time-consuming. If we use uh, the cross-temporal structure, we are able uh, to obtain the same results because they are equivalent, and, uh, but in uh, very le uh, uh, less uh, time. You can see that to do that, to, uh, to, uh, to do this, uh, we can use the cross-temporal bottom-up function. And as input, we have the aggregation matrix and the um, high frequency and the most aggregate temporal level, M. You can see that, uh, uh, so with the two, uh, with the two uh, ways in R, we can obtain the same results and, they, and that the cross-temporal cross constraints are fulfilled in this case. So to perform cross-temporal reconciliation with Foreco, it is necessary to arrange base forecasts and residuals in matrix form. The row of the matrix, as we have seen before, represent the cross-sectional dimension, while the columns represent the temporal dimension. So if you remember the dimension that we have seen before, the base matrix now have 324 row, that is the cross-sectional um, number of time series and uh, 120 that is the dimension of the ve temporal vector uh, of the temporal reconciliation. In this case you can see that uh, the base forecast are not reconciled as uh, <laughs> this is our starting point. So first we look to some uh, heuristic approach, like uh, the current transopolis that we have seen before, the reverse one, and the iterative, that use the reconciliation separately along the cross-sectional and the temporal dimensions. 
but still satisfy the cross-temporal constraints. So the current Atenas and Atenodopoulos uh, uh, alternative can be uh, achieved in for echo using the TGS rec function that stand for temporal then cross-sectional forecast reconciliation. So the input are uh, the same that we've seen before, so always the base, but uh, also we mix the temporal and the cross-sectional uh, uh, parameters, so M and C. In this case, it's important to note that we have to specify different covariance metrics, or can be also equal if you put uh, the same strategy here. But we have to put uh, different parameters for a different cross-sectional temporal framework. Um, the second one is uh, uh, the same idea of Kurenz Nasopoulos, but uh, uh, with a reverse order. So starting from cross-sectional and then temporal. The input are the same, but the function is called C CST rec, that stand from cross-sectional and temporal. The last heuristic is the iterative one. Uh, here we can uh, we can use the iter rec function, and the input are always the same, but uh, we can specify more parameter uh, for the iterative uh, uh, step. So, for example, if we want to start from the cross-sectional dimension, we just have to put to modify uh, this parameter. Um, if you, do, you don't want the output, uh, the verbose output, uh, you can put false here. And after there is some parameter for the convergence. So when we launch this function, uh, this uh, will appear in our console. So you can see that at each iteration, we are um, reduce our cross-sectional and temporal discrepancy until uh, uh, um, converging crit uh, 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 after the convergence at, in this case, 12 iteration. But you can see that after six iteration, uh, the change are very small. So uh, finally, we can consider the simultaneous uh, optimal reconciliation approach. And uh, uh, the function is called OCT rec that stands for optimal uh, cross-temporal forecast reconciliation. The input is the same that we've seen before, but in this case, uh, we have only one covariance matrix approximation parameter. Uh, that is the cross-temporal one. Also in this case, we have achieved uh, the uh, reconciliation as we expect. And uh, so, looking at the plot of the time series. So these are our observation for the plant 17. Uh, these are our base forecast. Then we, apply, we have applied the uh, partly bottom up, that is the, this one. We have applied the Currenza 10 and Atanasopoulos alternative. Okay, we can remove this one. <laughs> And uh, after that, uh, we have applied the um, cross-sectional, the reverse currenza transopolis one. And after we apply the iterative, and finally the optimal uh, reconciliation approach. Then you can see that is more near to the um, V3 observation. So if you look at the root mean square error for this time series, uh, we can see that uh, uh, the optimal reconciliation approach is improving respect to all the other alternatives. In this case, the partially bottom-up is not so effective as uh, uh, the other approach. But uh, if you look at this figure, you can see a problem. So when we have uh, temp uh, solar data, uh, solar power uh, generation gener generation data, we can't have uh, negative values. But uh, our reconciliation approach give us negative uh, values. So this is not good for us. And this is the first issue that uh, we will see. So um, 
it is worth noting that th this occurs uh, even when the reconciliation pursued works with non-negative base forecasts, because in this case, our base forecasts are always non-negative. So to address these issues, Foreco offered two options. One is the uh, OSQP, that is an optimization approach with non-negative constraints using the R package OSQP. The, the second one is uh, SNTZ, that is a simplest heuristic that exploits the hierarchy and the hierarchical nature of the data. SNTZ st stands for set negative to zero because uh, any negative forecasts for the high frequency bottom time series are set to zero. And then a cross temporal bottom up procedure is applied to obtain the complete set of fully and non negative coherent forecasts. So these two methods can be applied to uh, all the frameworks, so cross sectional, temporal, and cross temporal framework. The, in this case, uh, I'm showing you the OSQP results. In particular, uh, such that mm, this is an optimization problem. So uh, the function will return also sorry, uh, the mm, uh, convergent criteria matrix. Uh, with the objective value, the time, uh, the number of iteration, uh, the error, and uh, if the uh, convergence is achieved or, or not. The second option is uh, the set negative to zero, that uh, you can use uh, the parameter nn type to specify this one, because OSQP is the default one, and obviously put the nn equal to true as been done before. Uh, you can see that uh, oh, I just delete this one, but the time uh, are very different. So OSQP is more uh, time consuming that set negative to zero. Uh, on the other hand, uh, set negative to zero need a hierarchical structure. So we can't use set negative to zero for uh, generally linear constraint multiple time series, but only with uh, a hierarchical structure. So here you can see that uh, we start from the observation, as always. <laughs> we have our base forecasts that are non-negative. So at the beginning, we apply the uh, free version, but uh, we have a negative value. So we say, OK, now we want some non-negative reconciled forecast using OSQP. And you can see that we have no more negative values. But one can say, OK, I want to be faster, and I can use a set negative to 0. And also in this case, we don't have any negative forecast. But the reconciliation is different from the uh, optimization one. You have to remember this. So in this case, we have also different root mean square error for the two approach from for, for the two negative approach. And you can see that to put these constraints uh, have uh, a benefit for the accuracy and uh, so that uh, we are increasing our forecasting power. The second uh, practical challenge that I want to show you is uh, a priori constraints forecast. What does it mean? So sometimes uh, we may wish to incorporate a priori knowledge during the reconciliation process in order to improve the accuracy of the reconciled forecast. For example, uh, suppose we want to fix the daily forecast of the top level series at the base forecast values. So in this case, our daily top level base forecast have a base forecast equal to these two values, one for the first step ahead the day, so the first day, and the second one for the second step ahead, this is the second day. We want to fix these values for some reason, maybe because we know that these values are very accurate or some other um, idea. So to do that in Foreco, we need to indicate the position of the 
um, base forecast that we want to fix through the parameter V. And in this case, we can see that we apply the reconciliation and we obtain uh, the same values for the top level series. But uh, I don't show you, but for this case, the discrepancy are uh, the coherency are achieved, fixing the top level values. Uh, here we still have the non-negative issues because we still have no negative uh, we still have negative reconciled forecast. For echo, uh, allow you to mix the constraints, so we uh, we can continue to apply the non-negative idea that we've seen before uh, using uh, uh, the parameter and n equal to true. And in this case, uh, we obtain um, non-negative reconciled forecast. You can see here the plot where, starting from the observation, the base, uh, sorry, the free one, and you can see the difference between uh, not much different between the free and the fixed. So look at only at the fixed one, and we apply the non-negative procedure, and you can see that we don't have more neg uh, negative forecast in this case. If you look at the root mean square error, uh, you can see that uh, looking only at the free procedure, we are not improving fixed the top level, but uh, we are improving respect to the base forecast. And uh, apply the non-negative, uh, improve uh, the base, the fixed free one and the base forecast. But we are not improving respect to the non-negative one. The second, the last one, and uh, is uh, uh, it's a little idea that uh, um, we want to expand in the future. So our approach so far have involved considering all factor of M as potential aggregation order. Nevertheless, it is worth noting that we could also focus only on a given subset of these factors. So for example, we could be interested only on daily, 12 and hourly forecast, not all the set of the temporal levels. So how to do that in Foreco? It's very easy. You have just to specify the vector of the aggregation orders. So in this case, 24 for the day, 12 for the 12 hourly, and the one for the hourly forecast. Here uh, I'm uh, um, selecting the, the base forecast that I calculated before to have only base forecasts related to these values. And the same thing for the residuals. And uh, it's easy to use, uh, we don't have to do nothing that change the parameter M with this vector. So M now is no more uh, a single values, but is uh, this vector that we have specified before. As you can see, so uh, we have obtained uh, two reconciled forecasts for uh, a subset of the temporal aggregation and not the complete factors. You can see here uh, the example. Uh, no, it's, it's wrong one example. So, no, 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 it's correct, sorry. So we start from the observation, it's the base one. So we say uh, we want the reduction, these are these. And obviously the reduction uh, give us negative forecast. So we can put uh, the uh, non-negative uh, parameter. In this case, uh, we use a certainty to zero, but we can use also OSQP. And we obtain uh, the same non-negative uh, Reconcile forecast. The scores in this case, uh, um, yeah, we are going to improve respect to the base forecast, 
not improve really respect to the full set of subset, but uh, as I told you before, we are looking at only uh, the plant number 17 and not the complete set of the, um, of the multiple time series. Uh, if you want to look uh, at the complete results for this data set, uh, this is, uh, uh, implement, uh, this is uh, the application of this paper where you can find all the accuracy scores and all details about the accuracy uh, for the solar power uh, data. So thank you so much for um, this time. <laughs> And if you have a question, uh, I think that we have some time to spend uh, to speak about that. Correct answer? Ash? Yeah, Daniel. Thank yeah. Interesting presentation. So we can ask question if you have any from Daniel. Hi oh, there, Ashley, I've got, I've got a question. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah, um, so I'm quite new to um, forecast reconciliation. Uh, I'm just used to working with um, single level time series. Um, with G and I'm really interested, it's really good to see what you're doing. I'd like to get into it. Um, but would you be able to recommend a good book that really talks through the basics of, for example, why you need to set up the matrix, um, that talks about the relationship between the different levels and so on. Is there a good book or an article or any resource you'd recommend? Uh, yeah. So um, I show you maybe from here. Yes. So they are a lot here, but uh, okay. just look at some of them, not, not all. The first one that is very important uh, to start with uh, um, reconciliation is uh, obviously the paper of uh, uh, Rob of the professor Rob Heinemann of 211. That mm -hmm. is the starting point of reconciliation, optimal reconciliation, sorry, in the forecasting. Um, if you want a complete, uh, um, so looking at cross-sectional temporal and cross-temporal, I can, this is a self uh, marketing, sorry. <laughs> I can right, suggest yeah. uh, uh, my paper with Professor uh, Difonso. Let's look uh, at all three, all, all the three uh, frameworks. Oh. And, uh, but if you want, uh, yeah, this one, and this is the second time best paper <laughs> because uh, uh, in cross-sectional, because uh, here you can find a lot of idea that uh, uh, in our paper, uh, that we took in our paper, and uh, also the most famous uh, uh, cross-sectional uh, approximation of the covariance metric, that is uh, the shrinkage approach that I showed you before. Um, yeah, to, otherwise uh, I can also suggest you the, um, uh, let me go online because it's a very, Yeah, this one. This is a good book uh, for uh, forecasting, uh, for introduction to forecasting. There is not a lot of details, but it is a good uh, there is a good um, explanation of all the possible uh, forecasting problem in time series, and uh, not yet. Yes, here in chapter eleven, you have forecasting hierarchy and group in time series. Um, the idea here is uh, uh, not complete because not all that I show you is implemented in the package that they use because they use Fable tools to do reconciliation. Uh, but Fable tools, as, as I told you before, is limited now for the moment. But uh, I met Mitch uh, when I was in Monash. Mitch is the guy that uh, Oara is um, working on Fable tools. And in the few uh, two years, uh, he wants uh, to implement uh, all the forecasting uh, reconciliation in, in Fable tools. So I think that uh, in one or two years, you can have also a good uh, 
for cast reconciliation tools in the package Fable tools. For the moment, I can suggest you for Echo <laughs> in R. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, looks good. And yeah, I'm familiar with that uh, resource. But as you say, um, I find that sometimes it doesn't go into the <clears throat> full explanation. It, you know, it, is, mm -hmm. it tells you about the practical how to do yes. things, but not yes. always the more uh, theoretical reason behind it. But um, uh, yeah, I'll follow up on those references. Thanks. And will your slides be available on your? Yes. Uh, after the meeting, I will upload on my GitHub. But I think that uh, also um, Arsha. Yeah, we, we also share all the slides and the recorded video. Great. Okay. I think in the right. site of um, forecasting for such a good, you can find all the materials. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank yeah, you to you. Great, great work you're doing. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I believe we can take another one or two questions if you have any. Maybe. Oh, yeah, there is Mitch on the chat, so, yes. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Can I? That's it. uh, yeah. uh, it's only a curiosity, Daniele. If, yes. um, is it possible uh, to test uh, uh, if the improvement in the mean square error uh, are actually significant or uh, not? Uh, I... uh, yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, in... Um... Okay. The, um, we can use different approach, uh, but uh, usually in forecasting, we use uh, the MCB, that is the multiple comparable zone with the best, that is a non-parametric test. And uh, in our paper with Tommy, we show that uh, uh, our accuracy index uh, are significantly better than the base forecast uh, using this test. Otherwise, you can also use in the Bonferroni, um, the Dibon Mariano, sorry, uh, okay. test. Yes. Okay. And I know that also in financial now there is the MCS, that is uh, another test that we are looking for uh, this type of problem, but uh, it's, it's, it's new for me. So for the moment, I will suggest you the first, the two one that I told you. Okay, thank you. Thank you to you. Since we approach in the scheduled time, I guess we can wrap up the session. Thank you, Daniel, very much for accepting our invitation to be our instructor for the today's session. So we will be sharing all the recorded materials and all the codes through our LinkedIn page and through our website. So we are very excited to see you guys in our next lab session as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel. Thank day. you. Bye. Uh, Thank bye. you.